Hi folks, in this video I want to talk a bit about how to set up your Falcon ECs, UC for h ecs in particular. And I will show you three things. First I will talk a bit about the setup, the hardware which you need. Then I will talk a bit about the concept of how these things are working. And finally I want to show you a script which I've just uh, have written which is supposed to make the whole process much easier from a user perspective. Now the setup, that's my copter, it has a lot of your Falcon uh, nodes and so that's the CAN bus connectors and usually I disconnect for this purpose here, I disconnect the flight controller and this is not absolutely necessary for as long as the flight controller is disarmed so that it doesn't emit EC comments by itself. So it should be clear that when the EC, uh, fl the flight controller is emitting EC comments and some something else in addition, that things are just confused. So usually I just disconnect it because it's easier to do. It's easy to do. Now this is the cable to the CAN bus which usually would go to my gimbal. I don't have a gimbal attached right now, so this goes to my SL CAN adapter. And this is really a piece which you need uh, momentarily. And in my case, I in addition need an additional 5 volt power supply because I have that many nodes on my system that the USB cable is not powerful enough to drive all them. For example, I have here this no Notify uh, node which has this LEDs which consume current, then there is this GPS which consumes some current and so on and so forth. So therefore I need this additional power supply. Now, um, what, what one has to do now is the following. That first one has to realize that in a UFO car network each node needs to have its unique node ID. And then there is a second number which is coming in, which I call the EC index, which is important to tell which piece of information should go to which mo motor. Usually in, in, in old and in conventional setups what you would do is you would take your EC and connect it then to this pin, then the EC of motor 2 would connect to the next pin and so on and so forth. So in this case you have so to say physically made the connection to tell that motor number 1 is connected to this channel, motor number 2 is to this channel and so on and so forth. Now this is not working like this anymore on a UV car network because all the nodes are are connected to one and the same bus. So you need to have some additional number which tells which piece of information should go to num motor number one, motor number two and so on and so forth. And this piece of information I call the EC index. Now what is happening in detail is that our flight controller emits a message, a message which is called the EC raw comment which contains all the information. And then the motor of the EC, with the, which is assigned to the EC index number zero, will, will pick out of this array of numbers, will pick out the first number. Then the, the motor, which is assigned to the EC index number one, will pick out the second value, and the third motor, the third value, and the fourth motor, the fourth value, and so on and so forth. So this means that in practice, that you have quite a number of numbers to adjust and all this must be done correctly for the system to work. So the first thing you need to do is that you need to ensure that you need to set all the node ideas of all your nodes and you need to ensure that all these ideas are unique. A second thing you need to do is that you set all these EC indices correctly and in this process you have to ensure that each motor channel gets indeed the right information that is assigned to the correct EC index. And finally there is actually a third point you need to ensure, namely that all the motors spin in the correct direction. Now the usual approach to do this is to open this UV CAN GUI, where here you can see all my nodes now, and then you would go to the parameter section for each of the nodes and then you have to individually set up each of the nodes and so on and so forth. And of course you have to pay attention always when you're doing entering the right numbers. So this is a bit daunting and therefore I try to simplify this with a script. Now of these three steps here, the script currently is only supporting the second step of assigning the EC indices. 
I have clear ideas of how to handle the thing with the motor direction, I just have not yet done it. So this is something which will come in the future. Then as regards the first step of assigning also the correct or unique node IDs, this is actually a bit non-trivial and I'm not totally sure yet how I want to do this, so we will see how the future goes. Okay, so this was the concept, so in the last section I will just run through the script which I've written to set up this EC indices, uh, so just that you have an impression of how this works now. So I start the script, it's a Python script, and this script cannot work fully automatically, so there are some pieces of information which you need to give it. For example, you need to tell it the COM port to which the SLCAN adapter is connected, and then there's a second information which are called the number of ECs per node. And this is related to the following. So in this drawing, I have four motors and two nodes, which means that to each node there are two ECs connected. On my copter the situation is such that I have four nodes and to each node there is only one EC connected. But you also could use the configuration where you have just one node and to this one node all four motors are connected. So this is an information which the system cannot figure out itself, so you need to tell it. And for my copter, the proper configuration is that I have one node per e uh, one EC per node, therefore you find the number one. So now I just confirm that this is what I have, and then the system will look, uh, the script will look for all the nodes on the canvas, and it will also identify those which are ECs. So you can see it has found four ECs. And then as a next step what it will do, it will just write some arbitrary EC indices into each of its nodes. So these are not yet the correct numbers, uh, so it's just a startup situation so that the, that the script knows uh, on what it can rely on. So then it also has rebooted everything and so on and so forth, and now the crucial step comes that we go through each of the motors and assign them. And this is going like this, so I press the key. And this makes one of the motors to spin. I look up which motor it is, so it's this motor here. I look then into the scheme and see, okay, this is motor number D, so I press the D key. Okay, then let's go to the next motor. So now again a motor should spin, so it's this motor here. According to the scheme it's motor number A, so I press an A. Okay, let's go to the next motor. Let's try, so it's this motor now which is spinning. According to the scheme, it's motor number B, so I press B. And finally, there's an, the last motor spinning, so it's this motor here indeed. And so according to the scheme, it's motor C, so I press C. Okay, this was it. Now I press the key, and then it will work out the correct assignment of, this, of the EC indices and write these EC indices in each of the nodes. So this takes a bit of a second. Okay, so it has rebooted everything and started up so that it should be operational now. Now you can double check that everything is correct. For example, when I press the number A, the motor number A should spin, and indeed this motor here is spinning. When I press number B, the num motor number B should spinning, so indeed it's this one here. When I press number C, the motor C should spin, this is the case. And when I press number D, when the D motor should spin, which is also the case. So I'm all happy and press the number and press the key Q to complete everything. And this was it. Thanks for your